The year 1980 was a big year for me. I'm not talking about the Winter Olympics being in New York or any kind of geopolitical event. I'm talking about two huge inventions that came out that year. One, Pac-Man, big deal. The other one was that Pizza Hut introduced and rolled out the pan pizza to all of their restaurants. Now, Pac-Man and Pizza Hut, for me, go hand in hand because I spent all of my babysitting money hanging out at that pizzeria eating pizza out of a cast iron dish. And I'm gonna make that for you today, and it's so easy. This might actually be the easiest pizza that you'll ever make. So, one thing that we wanna do is create a dough that's nice and soft and plush inside. Of course, after it bakes, it gets a nice crust on it. But we're gonna start off with some bread flour. So I'm gonna weigh out my bread flour here. I need 11 ounces. Dough is just basically flour and water, and it's the ratio that's really going to have an impact on the end result. So a good idea to weigh out your flour. Next up, we've got a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of instant yeast. It's sometimes called rapid rise yeast as well. And this is again a teaspoon. Before I add my water, I'm just gonna give this a quick stir. All right, so I'm done with the scale. Now we're gonna add our water and we're using eight ounces of water here. So this is a pretty well hydrated dough. When you start talking about something called baker's percentage, that's how we figure out how much water is in the dough in relation to the weight of the flour. It's 11 ounces of flour and eight ounces of water. Now, this is pretty warm water. It should register between 105 to 110 degrees, so that looks great. It's really just kick-starting the fermentation process, get things bubbling quicker. So I'm going to add this right in and stir it around with my wooden spoon here. And you notice I don't have a mixer. We don't actually need one since we're working with a high hydration dough. When the dough starts to come together, we're gonna just knead this right in the bowl. And I'm gonna use my hands and just knead it for about a minute until it really starts to come together. And it should be a little bit sticky. And that is all the kneading that we need to do to this dough. I've got here a pie plate, it's a nine inch pie plate, and I have already sprayed it with a little bit of vegetable oil cooking spray. I'm gonna plop this dough round right in there. So just patting it out to about a seven inch circle here in this pie plate. This is not the dish that we're going to bake our pizza in, so don't worry. Now I'm going to spray the top with a little bit of vegetable oil baking spray and cover the pan with some plastic wrap. So at this point, this is going to go into the fridge and we're gonna leave it in there for quite a bit of time, anywhere between 12 to 24 hours. While the dough is in the fridge, the yeast is going to feed on the carbohydrates and the sugars in the dough, and it's gonna start that fermentation process. We're gonna have alcohols, flavorful esters, and other things that's going to make the dough taste really, really good. And a high hydration dough also helps to build structure. With many pizza dough recipes, we're used to giving the dough a lengthy kneading process in order to build structure, but there is another way. Let's first look at what happens when we knead dough in a mixer. In order for gluten to form, the two proteins in wheat, glutenin and gliadin, must first mix with water. The proteins become mobile, find each other, and bond together. Mechanically mixing a dough for several minutes helps this process along. However, our pizza dough is made with a high volume of water. We mix it manually for a minute and then give the dough plenty of time to rest in the fridge. Once in the refrigerator, the higher percentage of water in the dough allows the gluten proteins to move about on their own. They find each other and link up into a protein mesh without much mixing. The long stay in the fridge also allows for lots of complex flavor to develop, making this pizza not only super easy to make, but really easy to eat. All right, let's take a look at our dough here. Ah, oh, it had a good rest. Again, it was 12 to 24 hours. You can see it's risen a little bit. Oh, this looks great. And I actually let this sit on the counter for about 30 minutes just so that it can warm up. It's going to be easier to shape. You can see it's nice and puffy. So again, 12 to 24 hours in the fridge and then 30 minutes at room temperature. So we're about ready to transfer it to our pan and we are using a cast iron pan, of course, for our pan pizza. It's gonna develop a beautiful crust on that pizza like no other pan can. I wanna get it good and greased up because one of the hallmarks of a great pan pizza is that almost fried crust. So you gotta load up the skillet with quite a bit of oil and I'm using three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil here. I'm gonna swirl this around just to make sure that it's coating the bottom of that pan. All right, that looks well coated. There we go. 
I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on my hands now because I'm gonna handle this dough. I just wanna transfer it into our cast iron skillet. So, oh, and now I'm gonna use my fingertips to continue to coax this out a little bit wider shape. So I wanna work this out to about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the pan. And it's okay to press down on the dough a little bit. You wanna knock some of those bigger bubbles out at this point. All right, so now I'll just put that piece of plastic right back on top. And we're gonna let this sit here at room temperature for a good hour and a half. And we're gonna wait for that dough to get a little bit puffy. In the meantime, we've got plenty of time to work on our sauce. And we're making a no cook sauce here. This is a 14 and a half ounce can of whole tomatoes packed in juice. Just gonna drain it. And since I wanna get out a lot of the liquid so that we don't have to cook the sauce, I'm just gonna break these open with my hands to allow those juices to drain through. There we go. Now I'm just pressing on the solids here in the strainer to really get rid of some of that juice. Looks like I'm gonna be making a mean Bloody Mary later. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to put these tomato solids into my food processor. We have a few more ingredients we want to add. First of all, I've got my friendly bag of frozen garlic cloves. They come pre-peeled. I love to store them in the freezer. Let them thaw just for a moment because then it's easy to grate them instead of mince them. You can of course use a garlic press or mince them by hand. I'm just using a rasp grater here. There we go. I'm going to add another teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil, some nice flavor, and a quarter teaspoon of table salt. I have a quarter teaspoon of sugar, quarter teaspoon of dried oregano, and a pinch of red pepper flakes. Just a little heat, it's up to you. Big pinch, little pinch. I'm going big pinch. All right, lid goes on, and I'm gonna let this process until it's nice and smooth. It's gonna take about 30 seconds. And that is our easy no cook sauce. Concentrated flavors, and you can actually make this up to three days in advance, just store it in your fridge. All we have to do is wait on the dough. It's cheese time. I've got mozzarella. This is whole milk mozzarella. Gone ahead and shredded this. It's about seven ounces or one and three quarter cups. We're using Monterey Jack as well. This is four ounces of Monterey Jack. And you'll see why in just a moment, but for now, all I need to do is shred this on the large holes of a box grater as well. Put that aside. Let's bring that pan with our crust, a beautiful dough. And you can see it's just started to get a little bit puffy. We let it sit for an hour and a half. So it's just giving it time to rise a little bit and wake back up. First of all, I'm going to add a half a cup of our no cook sauce to our pizza. Now I'm going to spread this until it's about a half inch from the edge of the pizza. Mm, mm, mm. So now we're gonna bring in our Monterey Jack cheese. We're not topping the pizza with Monterey Jack cheese. We're actually going to create a wall around the perimeter. Sometimes when you order a pan pizza and a little bit of the cheese hits the side of the pan, it starts to fry and turn brown. That's called Frico. And we love it so much that we're creating it from the bottom up. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle this Monterey Jack around the perimeter. And we're using Monterey Jack here because it is a drier cheese than mozzarella and it's a little less salty. Just making sure I have enough to go around. It's okay if it touches a little bit of the sauce. So that's looking good. I've spread it all around the perimeter and now I'm just gonna press it onto the edges of the pan to create kind of a, a quarter inch to a half inch tall cheese wall. Now that is looking pretty good. Now obviously as it bakes, some of this cheese is gonna slump down a little bit. That's perfectly fine. We wanna get some good adherence to the pan. That way it'll brown nicely. Now we can't forget about the middle. So we're gonna use our mozzarella here. And this is seven ounces of whole milk mozzarella and it just goes right over the sauce. Oh, amazing. So this is ready to bake and I'm gonna put it in a 400 degree oven. I'm gonna place it on the lowest oven rack and that assures me that the bottom of this pan is close to the heat source and we can start to get some good browning. So we're gonna leave it in there for about 25 up to 30 minutes until it looks really well browned. Ooh, now that's a pizza. Oh, look at that sizzling and the crust around the edge of the pan. Beautiful, where the cheese started to melt. So before I move on, I'm just gonna let this sit here for about three minutes until the sizzling stops. I'm gonna keep a towel on the pan handle just to remind myself not to touch it. 
All right, the bubbling stopped, and now I'm gonna take a butter knife and just run it around the edge of the pan. That's why I wanted this pizza to sit for about three minutes. It's gonna allow the cheese to loosen from the sides. And also, I'm gonna take a peek underneath and see how the browning is doing. Oh, the edge is amazing. So I'm gonna take a very thin spatula here and just take a peek underneath to see how the browning's doing there. I can see a little bit of color there, but I wanna get this a little bit more brown. So I'm going to put the burner on underneath the pan, turn it to medium, and I'm gonna let this go for up to five minutes. I'll lift it up and check it every few minutes just to make sure that it's not over browning. Looks great, smells even better. And I just checked under the hood, so to speak, and the color looks beautiful. So I'm gonna take two thin spatulas and that pizza comes right out. And I'm gonna transfer it to a wire rack. I'm gonna let this cool down for about 10 minutes before I eat it. That might have been the longest 10 minutes of my entire life, but the pizza is now safe to eat because it's cool enough. I'm gonna slide it off of the rack here. There we go. And here's a trick that I learned from a friend that used to work at a pizzeria. You start right in the middle and then you go out. That way you're not crushing the crust. Let's pull this apart and see what's going on on the inside. Oh, doesn't that look amazing? Oh, it's super crisp too. All right, so I'm gonna do the same here. Cut this right across from the center. And I'm gonna stop cutting now because, well, I just wanna start eating it. Beautiful, fluffy interior, really beautiful crumb. We'll see how it tastes though. Mm. Super cheesy. I'm gonna go for the crust end. Again, that's where that Frico cheese is. Mm. That is what this pizza is all about. And it's that super cheesy crust that got nice and toasted. I love it because we took the best of the 80s and we left all that other junk behind. So if you wanna make this incredible pan pizza at home, remember these keys. Make a dough with a high percentage of water, build a wall of cheese around the perimeter, and finish the pizza right on the stovetop. So from America's Test Kitchen at home, a plush and crisp, super cheesy and super easy cast iron pan pizza. Super cheesy. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.